A new landmark study has provided the first evidence of the effectiveness of the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine in South Africa's healthcare workers. The study found the vaccine to be 83% effective at preventing deaths and 75% effective at preventing hospitalization. The Sisonke trial study also found that the jab was effective against both the beta and delta COVID-19 variants. Professor Linda Gale Becker is with the Desmond Tutu HIV Center. She's the executive director there and co-lead investigator of the study and she joins us virtually from Cape Town. Prof Becker, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I must admit when I realized the study had finally been done, it just took me back to those days leading up to those first jabs being administered to our healthcare workers. And I got a bit of a, 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 a sort of had a bit of an emotional moment because I remember at the time we were still thinking it's going to be so long until we can get um, these jabs into the people who need it most, our, our frontline workers. Before we talk about exactly what those findings were in the study, take us back to that moment when you realized it's going to happen, those vials are about to arrive and we're going to be able to start administering it as part of this very, very important study? Well, Marcel, I can tell you I've been doing this for many, many years. I'm, you know, long in the tooth when it comes to clinical trials, particularly in HIV, but that moment was uh, life-changing. You know, I really feel like this is science in in the making, um, being able to actually see a very new innovation, getting into the field and saving lives so tangibly was really spectacular. And, you know, if anything might draw young uh, clinicians into the field of research, I think it's that kind of experience. So really um, great honor to be mm -hmm. even part of it. So, um, yeah, I think marvelous that South Africa's made this contribution. Uh, and you were all over the, uh, the uh, various media platforms explaining what was happening almost in real time. There were live broadcasts happening while you were standing and those jabs were being administered. Uh, give us a synopsis of what happened with that information, because obviously there was a lot of data that was being collected in real time. And that was all going into what now we have as this landmark study that was published in The Lancet. Uh, take us through the process. Yeah, so Marcel, you know, you'll remember the 17th of February was the day we actually administered a vaccine to our president, um, and that really started it. Uh, there were an, almost 500,000 healthcare workers who subsequently were vaccinated with the single dose. Uh, we did this in the under the auspices of a phase 3B trial, which was the mechanism we could through our regulatory uh, authority used to get these jabs into individuals, remembering we weren't yet in a place where we had effect um, uh, emergency use authorization for these vaccines. So just an extraordinary opportunity to vacc vaccinate our frontline healthcare workers who are, of course, most at risk of COVID acquisition given their occupation. Um, and so in the next few months, we we were able to administer the single dose. Again, a wonderful uh, it, part of this vaccine is as a single dose, it starts to work within 14 days, really has a role as an emergency intervention. And the Lancet study, which we've now published, was it the primary endpoint. Can we protect healthcare workers against death and severe COVID, even with a single jab in this kind of scenario. And we were able to show uh, uh, using our the wonderful um, intervention of our medical aid schemes um, and really 250,000 of our healthcare workers within those medical aid schemes compared to matched individuals who did not receive the vaccine for us to be able to say we had a vaccine effectiveness, as you say, of 83% protection against death and equally very high protection against hospitalization. So probably the largest study in the world uh, under real world circumstances of at the single dose J&J. And it shows without doubt that even the single dose is very, very important as a protection uh, in our COVID pandemic worldwide.
Now, as in general society, within the healthcare uh, fraternity, there were people that were fearful, who had their doubts, who were unsure about getting the jab. They wanted to wait until there was more information and data and studies out there. Um, is it hoped that now that this uh, very important study has been published, um, that more of those doubts and those fears um, and those questions will be answered and more people, and especially those in the healthcare sphere, will be willing to get those important jabs? Yes, Marcel. On the one hand, it's how well does the vaccine work? And on the other hand, does it have any side effects? So we were also able to publish in the New England Journal of Medicine that actually the side effects were minimal. The vaccine is safe. And now, you know, the South African public also have evidence that the vaccine itself is effective. This was shown to be effective in both the beta and the delta wave. And I can give you a heads up that we have another publication under review looking at the two dose J and J in the face of Omicron and again showing effectiveness. So I think without doubt, um, we, you know, we can reassure the public that this is a good strategy as, uh, as protection against COVID. Um, and again, recommend that individuals go out and get themselves vaccinated if they haven't yet done so and get themselves boosted to ensure full protection against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This really is uh, highly recommended under the circumstances. Uh, uh, South Africa's clinicians, virologists and scientists working together on this. I've heard repeatedly from uh, those that I've interviewed in your, uh, um, in your industry, if I could call it that, that it's been the one positive out of this monster that you've all been battling together so bravely is that it's brought so many of the different silos of, your, of, the, um, of the medical world to work together. But at the same time as well, South Africa has really put their hands up on the international stage as being leaders in this field. Um, how much attention is the study going to get? How important is it going to be uh, for those um, like yourself, but in positions elsewhere in the world who would be able to use this information going forward? Now, Marcel, I would say two things. I think South Africa continues to punch above its weight in terms of HIV, TB, and now COVID. And, mm -hmm. and I think the South African public should be proud of the science that is conducted in the small country relatively to the rest of the world. And then secondly, yes, I think this positions the J&J &J vaccine, which somehow has been a little bit discredited, I think, um, for, you know, for reasons that aren't entirely clear to me. It does position, again, the single dose back in, uh, in a position that is on par with other vaccines and important because we clearly still need to vaccinate a large part of Africa. Mm. And I think the single dose vaccine is going to be important in doing that. And so as we continue to ensure that more Africans receive vaccination, uh, South Africa again playing an important role in actually uh, delivering those vaccines to our neighboring countries. This is reassuring data for those individuals. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for your insight and your expertise as always and the work that you and your teams continue to do. Thank you so very much. That's Professor Linda Gale Becker Desmond, with the Desmond Tutu HIV uh, Center. She's the executive director. I've got the double doses of Pfizer and I decided to get the booster of the J&J &J, and I'm here to tell the tale. So if you haven't done yours yet, please go ahead and get those jabs done.